Hello, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be talking about the flaws of communism, socialism, and other quote unquote revolutionary people like a YouTuber named Hakim and other neo socialist people who are not actual socialists. Let me start by explaining that just a simple answer just because you call yourself a socialist does not mean you are one. You cannot be a real socialist without following the ways of Marx. People like this person right here, Cossack, he calls himself a socialist but believes Marx is a fraud and not an actual communist, despite him being the founder of communism and socialism itself. And if you can guess, he is a Leninist, and there are many other people, like for example Hakim, or Revolutionary USSR, the, the YouTuber, not the nation. They are people who are more following into Leninist politics and less of Marxist politics. The reason they do this is because Marxism actually has a, a better theory than what, Lenin is, than what Lenin has put in place before in the USSR. Despite from contrary belief, Lenin did actually try to hold elections uh, at the start of the USSR when he finally captured all of it and defeated the uh, the Russian Empire. Bad for him, his party didn't win. The social revolutionaries did. He called it a, a rigged election. And that's when and the the revolution started again with the, the USSR and White Russia at war with each other. Fun fact, multiple nations including the United States, Poland, Czechoslovakia and many others uh, actually sent volunteers to White Russia to fight against the USSR of course it failed because, well, they're volunteers and not many of them were sent, but other than that, as I was saying, YouTubers like Hakim and Social Revolutionary are not Marxists, and by definition, and from my friends who actually support and debate communism, Links in the description of where they are, the politics server. Using their definitions of communism and Marxism, people who do not support Marxism or any form of communism related to Marx is not a real communist and therefore a neo socialist. Which makes sense considering they're taking a new ideology, including Leninism and Stalinism. They're taking those ideologies and sometimes they're putting complete different things that were never once in there. This is Hakim. The so-called social... so-called revolutionary. And a so-called Marxist. Despite this, there are many people who are not Marxists who support him, and including a lot of his really controversial videos, including the humans are not equal, the humiliating Vosh, and many other videos, especially this one. That was one of his most controversial ones on his channel. And his comrades, the Finnish Bolshevik, the Marxist Paul, and 
all of them else. They all have a lot of controversial and or unproven videos. Some of Hakim's videos, he actually gives sources to these. Uh, even so, most of these sources are either completely Eastern sources, and only some of his sources are cut and uncontexted CIA pages, for which he does not include the whole page, sorry, the, uh, the whole uh, document, and only includes one page. There is only a couple of videos which he has actually given sources that people will agree with. And that only video is this one. Mostly because there is no singular party that likes conservatives. Conservatives are literally the one of the worst parties that everyone has agreed to hate. That, from what I know, and from watching his videos, despite it not looking like it, because there's no red line, YouTube does that, not just to me, but for other people. From what I know, he doesn't actually give sources uh, that many people would agree with, and only ones that are either completely biased to the Eastern world, and others that either aren't even true or out completely out of context. Here's one of the uh, one of the videos. I'll just copy it into Google so it's much easier. Put it away. And this is his take on the on the quote unquote undemocratic dissolution of the USSR. Even though the USSR itself was never democratic in the first place. Uh, this can be proven by the amount of dictators that have ruled. And the dictators who have stopped ruling have either resigned, been ousted, or have died. One of the most popular ones being Stalin, who died of a stroke. Now here's where things get really complicated. He talks about the dissolution and doesn't mention that it collapsed when it very clearly did. And I'll I'll talk more into that once I hear more information. That is actually true. The Soviet Union's economy has been declining, or was declining, in the 1970s. And Gorbachev, being the only one to actually try to save it, tried to convert the USSR from a communist economy to a mixed uh, social capitalist economy to try and save the USSR. Many people say he wanted to destroy it, when that is untrue. He said himself that despite countries leaving uh, the Warsaw Pact, or the Common Form, or whatever you like to call it, the Eastern Bloc, Gorbachev himself said that he did not necessarily agree with the full reforms, but he will not stop them either. Gorbachev was, well, Gorbachev and Yeltsin were known as the most quote unquote democratic. Uh, leaders of the Soviet Union at the time, despite it failing. Once the Soviet reached past the 1980s, there was no way of saving it, even if communism went back into an all-high, the USSR would have not been able to be saved, and that can be proven in many ways, including their overspending in military. Even if that was stopped, the USSR would not be able to get saved, as its economy and GDI, as well as PPP, uh, were going down. The, the, the GDP itself uh, was close to collapsing big when the Soviet Union quote, quote unquote dissolved. Technically, it did dissolve, but according to the definition, the USSR collapsed because 
not all countries left it. For example, T Tajikistan, uh, they were forced out after Russia left because they couldn't hold their economy by themselves, and especially not with Kazakhstan still inside as an SSR. Kazakhstan for four days was the entire USSR. And to this day, there are still USSR remnants inside a lot of these countries, especially uh, Tajik Tajikistan and Kazakhstan, as well as Latvia. Despite this, communism, ha communist support has been diminishing. And okay, let's just continue the video. by the reactionaries in power to destroy the nation simply through signing a piece of paper. That itself is not true, but right at the same time. Yeltsin, not Gorbachev, by the way, this gets confused a lot. While Gorbachev was being kidnapped by a Soviet party, Yeltsin, who was quote-unquote working with Gorbachev, went behind his back and signed... Uh, the dissolution of the USSR with Ukraine and Belarus and despite this and despite signing it it was still considered a collapse of the USSR because of the collapsing economy and how many nations were forced out of it because if the nations uh, did not get out of it quickly their economy would collapse at the same time that is one of the many reasons they left the main one of the main reasons being because they wanted to switch to a uh, f more free country. Yes, they did have a lot of Soviet support at the time, but again, it's been diminishing and getting less and less popular. By the 1990s, they were about 70, 76 percent, and by the 2020s, they were only 50 percent, and it's still lowering to this day. Is never higher. It's never gone higher. <coughs> and the highest it's ever been in modern day uh, was, I'm pretty sure, 2013. But that quickly went down as well. <coughs> Let's continue. There wasn't a vote to dissolve it. People weren't clamoring in the streets trying to destroy it. Nothing. A in the Russian SSR itself, there were no people clamoring in the streets, that is correct. But in many countries, like Hungary, there was a revolution, a very violent one. Uh, East Berlin, aka East Germany, there were many demonstrations there to end the wall going down, as well as to unify uh, both German states. And the unification as well as... East Germany want to become democratic was proved with the over 2.5 million East Germans from 1930 up to 1990 uh, passing over the wall. Sorry, I'm passing over. Um, sorry, wait, 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 no, no, no. The 2.5 million East Germans heading over to West Germany before the wall was built. Once the wall was built, over 5,000 uh, East Germans tried to cross the wall, with hundreds losing them li their lives uh, by getting caught and being shot and killed by East German soldiers. Uh, this also caused a lot of tensions once East German civilians were shot, because in one case there was an East German civilian shot uh, when they crossed the border into West German land. And once they're officially in West German land, that's when they were shot. They were shot two times in the chest and died later in a hospital. This almost caused a conflict between uh, the two nations. Luckily, it was settled by diplomacy. A piece of paper was signed, and against the wishes of the Soviet people, the USSR was criminally dissolved. Now, the USSR our people weren't against it they were disappointed and they did support it but there wasn't much evidence or there isn't enough evidence going around that they were against it entirely 
despite there being a lot of Soviet supporters, there are plenty of Soviet supporters who also enjoyed the freedom as well as more rights, especially the religious ones like the Jewish people, the Orthodox, the Christians, and etc. A referendum was done right before the dissolution asking people if they would like to preserve the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, and 80% of the Soviet Union voted. Now, 80% is still a controversial vote to this day. And even Russia itself doesn't have definitive proof that this was actually true. Uh, we only know from speculation and from what we read on books or from what they gave us. The USSR may have well rigged the vote, but even then, no side has enough evidence or proof for either argument. So this will be nulled, and it's not an argument whether or not you count it as one or not. Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, Moldova, Georgia, and Armenia didn't take part in this, but... But the general trend from all the other republics might give an indication to uh, how they may have voted. Now, this is a argument or fallacy that he just used. He's taking other general specifications from other things and bringing it onto ones that either didn't play in the act or were not involved in the first place. The Estonian, Latvian and Lithuanian being some of the first countries to leave the USSR entirely, uh, their support was below 40% at the time, and to this day it is still below 40%. Estonia by themselves have just reached below 30% communist support. Moldavia is a hard uh, one to answer because there is no general information about it. Georgia and Armenia, they are also hard to answer because of their extremely unstable government. So we do not have accurate information on the three countries. The results? 76.4% of voters wanted the USSR to stay. 70 I, I'll say this again. We do not have definitive proof whether or not they actually voted this or it was rigged. And we also do not have definitive proof that it was fake in the first place. All we can go off of is what the USSR has told us, or from what Gorbachev has told us, or Yeltsin, or I don't remember who actually hold the referendum, the government. 6.4%. They wanted the USSR to stay and not be dissolved. That's almost 4 out of every 5 people. It's 4 out of every 5 people? Not not that close. I'd say more 4 out of every 8 people. Um, it's obvious he didn't actually know what that meant, but I do give him props for trying. Specifically in the peripheral republics, the vote was almost entirely for the preservation of the Union. This is this is actually untrue. The vote uh, was a referendum. Yes, it was to see if they wanted to preserve it, but not if they wanted to keep it. This was stated uh, in the referendum itself. Uh, because even if they voted yes or no, it would have dissolved either way. Blatant proof that spits in the face of all those that claim that the USSR was horrible and that people. The USSR was a horrible country, and despite what other people think, there were more than three, uh, three famines. There were more killings that Stalin did, over 20 million, uh, from what a lot of historians say. Some Russian historians say the same as well. And life in the USSR, especially I have friends 
who had a family that used to live there. Their family described it as a horrible place. Uh, they didn't have enough money for food. Uh, and they described it as similar to capitalist countries because there are many rich people and many poor people. And they described it as the USSR did not change anything at all but become an even worse dictatorship than what the West was. So they were still anti-West, but they did not favor the USSR either. We're ecstatic to finally see it gone. Now let's go back. This was a 2017 to 2019 referendum. This completely goes against his point where the majority of Soviets and Russians and others uh, didn't like the USSR being didn't, uh, collapsing. As well as he used this, he said didn't collapse despite including the collapse of the Soviet Union. This is because support is diminishing and it's been proved that since more and more of the Soviet people have been getting access to the outside world and with a lot of Russians moving to the United States, surprisingly, uh, they have voted in favor of the West and not the East. This is proven by the less than 55% of Soviet support uh, currently. And the support will only keep going down. And you might argue because it's all of the uh, older generation, but that's not true at all. Most Russians, it doesn't matter what age, a lot of Russians in all ages supported and still support the USSR to this day. And so you can't use that argument either. Polls and practical majority of Eastern Germans feel life better under communism. That was actually a false statement. This is because they used the fact that the East Germans who stayed inside East Germany, instead of counting the ones that fled to the West, uh, were the ones that said that East Germany had better life. In reality, if the ones that didn't flee to the west had stayed in the east, that would have been a much, much different poll. Flee every former Tajikistan pines for old Soviet Union strength. Uh, not really surprising. Most of Central Asia, well, actually, all of Central Asia are third or second world countries. And uh, this is natural since Central Asia, the, their borders. Uh, their instability. They didn't actually care for the USSR itself. They more or so wanted to stay inside the USSR for protection and for the strength and to feel powerful again with the dictatorship under uh, the USSR and over the people because it, it's what gives them power. Socialist nation have shown otherwise. Most ex-Soviet states. Uh, this was false. It was the populations that said this, not the states themselves. The governments were and still are anti-communist. Ukraine today uh, is very much an anti-communist state and despises Russia, especially because of the uh, 2016 war. And yeah. With many people saying they lived better. Uh, this was more uh, of a rigged vote. This was proven rigged and even a troll by some other people. Because of, uh, what was it called? Some originally made a Reddit post about it uh, in Romania. And it just started spreading through, and then the news caught up on it and used that as proof that Romanians were struggling for communism. You know how the news goes, they make everything over dramatic just to get more money and views from people. 
better during socialist times. Uh, this one was completely false, and the proof of this is because Hungar Hungary, with the majority of support that were not communists, had a major, massive uh, a rebellion, revolution, a really violent one, which caused it to turn from communist to a neutral democratic country. And many wishing it would come back. Wonderful polls prefer a communist state. Um, this was this poll was a biased poll as it was more done in eastern Poland as that was the longest that was ever in the USSR. The Western Poland, Western Polish, uh, were majority democratic and majority Western, most because of their more developed state and their more developed military. Many countries like Poland and Germany despite being reunited, are still having problems of being divided from east to west. If you don't believe me, I can make it. Cezik's are nostalgic for communism. This was a controversial claim. There wasn't actually proof that there was a vote or actual poll referendum that did this and proved this. You can argue with me otherwise, but I'm standing on my statement until I see proof of this. Separate video about this. At least we had enough. Now this was, yeah, I've seen this one before. This one was completely false. He, um, once, once Slovakia converted into a democratic country, their industry almost tripled because of American support and once in the European Union their economy got much much better using the euro as a secondary currency. Their food supplies are much higher than what they had in the USSR and they've been importing uh, resources from other countries like Germany and France. Even in Ukraine, the quote-unquote most anti-communist republic... He is right about something. Ukraine was not the most anti-communist republic. It was known for being the most anti-communist because it had uh, the leastest supporters in the USSR, despite it being majority Soviet. Or so claims Western propaganda. The true res and this is a really common argument made by neo-Leninists. Uh, the quote-unquote Soviet propaganda. This can easily be dismissed and bypassed as we can say the exact same to them and call it Eastern propaganda. But if we do that, then they get mad and apparently they... They say that, blah, 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 oh, you, you did this, you did that, even though they've done much worse than the West has ever done. Results show that over 70%, a clear majority. And he's back on to the same argument for the third, maybe fourth time. And he hasn't given a single source on any of his arguments whatsoever. Wanted the Republic to stay. If only the Soviet people could vote to recreate the Soviet Union. The reason that they won't do this now is because Russia, the Russian Federation, has not changed from the Soviet Union. It is still a dictatorship. See, you claim that the USSR was a promising country and a prosperous country, yet you ignore the fact that the USSR was a dictatorship. But once the USSR collapses, or as you call it, dissolves, and when Putin is a dictatorship, that when you take dictatorship seriously, when you call him out for being an American puppet, or for being a uh, Western puppet, or stuff like that, and that's the only time you ever recognize dictatorships, because that's how most neo-Leninists do it. But... As Emma Goldman once said, if voting really did change anything, they would have made it illegal. And that quote is used a lot by many Soviet supporters. That vote itself, sorry, I mean that quote itself is untrue. 
and many, if not all, democratic countries, exceptions being the Democratic Republic of North Korea and China and the Russian Federation, Belarus, Ukraine, there are dictatorships. And see, in, in North Korea, you can vote, but you can only vote for one person, and you can guess who that one person is. Basically, any country you see that has the Democratic Republic of the country name, chances are it's not a democratic or a republic at all. See, for North Korea is a special case. It's one of, if not the only country, which is a necrocracy. A, uh, a country which is led under by a dead leader, aka Kim Jong someone, not Kim Jong Un, but the other one before him. I don't remember. And from that, this is the end of the video. It's been 31 minutes. Thank you for joining me as I explain the flaws of Hakim, this video, and the USSR. Have a great day and night. And if Hakim ever sees this video, which I really doubt it, considering I'm a small YouTuber that's not relevant in any way or form, uh, feel free to add me on Discord if you have it. I'll put it in here now. That is my Discord. If anyone wants to debate me, feel free to add me, and I will gladly do so. Have a good night or day wherever you're from. Goodbye.